hip fractures surgical fixation. The optimal time for surgery on hip fractures is after medical stabilization. There is an improved outcome if surgery is done within 48 hours. Surgical delay up to 72 hours for medical stabilization is warranted in unhealthy patients. Surgical urgency of fixing the hip fracture in young patients is important. Displacement and physiological age of the patient will decide the treatment. Non-displaced fractures should be fixed to prevent displacement. This is done for the young and older patients, and it is a minimal surgery. The screws are placed in an inverted triangular pattern, with the inferior screws posterior to the midline and adjacent to the calcar. If the fracture is displaced and the patient is young, you will do closed reduction or open reduction to have the fracture anatomic. Reduction of the fracture should be anatomic. Some people think that an open reduction is the ideal approach in the young patient. Avoid malreduction. Adequacy of reduction is the most important factor. A healed femoral neck fracture with shortening is associated with a poor functional outcome. How do you do open reduction of the hip fracture? You can do anterior approach, a Smith-Peterson approach, between the sartorius and the tensor fascia lata. The lateral femoral cutaneous nerve of the thigh could be injured. Or you can use the anterolateral approach, Watson-Jones approach, between the tensor fascia lata and the gluteus medius. Superior gluteal nerve injury may occur during dissection if more than 5 cm above the estabulum. In general, the sooner the reduction and the fixation in young adults, the better is the result. When we talk about screws for femoral neck fracture fixation, we talk about three parallel cancellous screws. The screws should be inserted 5 mm from the articular cartilage. Avoid posterior superior position of the screws to avoid injury to the blood supply of the femoral head. Inferior and posterior screws are usually better. The threads of the screws should cross the fracture site. Try to insert the screws at or above the lesser trochanter to avoid fracture below the fixation. The basal cervical fracture and Powell's type 3 fractures should be fixed by using anti-rotation screw and the compression hip screw. There is a higher incidence of avascular necrosis when hip fractures are fixed with a compression hip screw compared to cannulated hip screws. The compression hip screws is particularly useful in a subgroup of patients that are smokers and the fracture is basy cervical. They will have less revision surgery than patients with cancellous screws alone. Displaced fracture in an active elderly patient will be treated by a total hip replacement. Usually the patient will be above 60 years old and the patient will have a better function, but there is a higher incidence of dislocations of the hip. Total hip replacement is also used in patients with femoral neck fractures associated with rheumatoid arthritis or degenerative arthritis. Displaced fracture in debilitated, inactive elderly patient. The treatment is bipolar or unipolar prosthesis. What approaches do you use for the prosthesis? Posterior approach, 
may give you more dislocations. And through lateral approach, you may get gluteal muscle weakness. And recently, anterior approach is used. An older patient with a displaced femoral neck fracture that is treated by a screw fixation, the surgery is considered to be a minimal surgery, but there is an increased risk of secondary surgery, about 40% reoperation rate, so don't do it. How about the surgery for non-union of femoral neck fractures? You do valgus intertrochanteric osteotomy in the young. You will change the orientation of the fracture from vertical by mechanically bad to horizontal by mechanically good, and this will allow healing of the fracture. Patient mortality. The in-hospital mortality rate is about 6%. The one-year mortality rate is about 30%. The risk factors for mortality will include surgery delay more than four days, may double the mortality rate. These patients are probably sicker than the average patient. Any patients with medical comorbidities, four or more, will have an increased mortality. Renal patients with hip fractures have increased mortality. Patients with low sodium levels or institutionalized patients will have higher mortality. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.